Welcome to another episode of Gritman Aguilar Chichen, where we seek simply to know. Please ensure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, turn on the notification button, and to share with your friends. Welcome everybody. My name is Gritman Ayilara, and you are especially welcome to this episode of our seeking the reality of our spirituality and also moving up ahead into a place of divine nature. Now, this is the platform for every single one who accept that they are ignorant of something and they are seeking to know. For those who seek, know. Now, Today we are talking about bondage of human nature, the bond of human nature, or you can say bondages of human nature. To start with, I would like to tell you a story. And I would like you to take some joke into. A certain woman died some time ago. And she went to heaven. And as she got to heaven, she met the secretary of heaven. Let's say Apostle Peter, or one of the followers of Muhammad. He was holding the book that contains the name of those who will make it to heaven and those who will go to hell. And so, he told this woman, your name is in the book of those who are going to heaven. But my dear lady, I pray you, tell me, would you like to go to hell? And the lady said, no, I don't want to go to hell. And Apostle Peter asked, why don't you want to go to hell? He said, I don't, I don't, like, I don't like hell. I've heard a lot of things about hell. I don't want to be there at all. And she was almost going to start this activism even in the gate of heaven. Oh, I have the right to go to heaven. You say my name is there. I believe God is a God of justice. I should be in heaven right now. He's waiting for me. I need to die and wine with God. Why are you trying to sell the idea of hell to me? I don't like hell. I like heaven. I dislike everything about hell. I want to be in heaven. <laughs> so Apostle Peter said, okay, you will be in heaven. But what if you take a look at what hell looks like? Just have a peep of what hell looks like, and then you will come back to heaven. You have the right to stay here. You have the ticket. Everything you have done has given you the access to heaven. So she said, okay, that's not going to be a bad idea, but I'm not going inside. I'm not going inside. <laughs> and they took an elevator. And contrary to this woman's opinion or idea or knowledge about hell, instead of them to go down, the elevator went up. And she was like, this is what I told you. I don't want this hell. Why is hell going to... You know, people believe that hell should be down while heaven is up. As a matter of fact, growth are not real. It's just uh, imagination of you and what you have been told. So they took the elevation and they went up, uh, the elevator and they went up. And they got to the place and the elevator opened. And at the door, this woman could see beautiful people lounging around, drinking some wine, taking champagne, everybody listening to music. And uh, all the artists that this woman loved while she was on earth, they were there. Fela is there. And um, she could see Mandela. She could see Martin Luther King. She could see so many people she wanted to see. She had read so many stories in the scripture. And surely she wanted to meet Moses and all. She could see them there. There's a swimming pool, there's a beach, everybody just feeling cool. And she was like, what a beautiful hell you have here. <laughs> and Apostle Paul, as to Ospisa said, okay, you have seen hell, let's go back to heaven. And she was like, uh, okay, let's give it a try. If hell could look like this, heaven should be better. So when they got to heaven, down there, 
She took a peep and she realized that heaven is filled up with so much cloud, music that is so slow, you're almost falling into a depression. Everybody's just looking like echo, oh, like a figurine. They walk gently, they move gently, although they are not crying, but they are neither happy. Everybody just moving in a line. It is too organized to be fun. Everything is just in place. Nobody have ad adventure. Nobody's trying to take any, you know? And she was like, I, I think I prefer to go to hell. <laughs> and Peter said, okay, but I thought you don't like hell and you love heaven. And she said, that was before I know what really hell looks like. And they took another trip back to hell. And at this time, when they opened the elevator for her, she saw desert, saw people leaning on each other, trying to make the nearest way to move around. Poverty, everything, they are stricken. And she was like, what happened? I was just here a few minutes ago. What happened to her? And Peter said, when you first came, you had an introduction. Now you are a staff. The first time you were just an employee, employer, an employee rather, looking for a job, a prospective employee. Now that you have gotten into the system, you need to know what it takes to make hell look fun for you. And that's a lot of adventure. Unfortunately for her, she couldn't go back to heaven because heaven is where things are done for you, but it is boring. But hell is where the activity is. There is adventure. So you can create your own kind of heaven even while you are there in hell. Now, what is the moral of this story? The moral of the story is do not ever make a decision when your emotion is in place or through the information you have gotten or gathered from other people. Make sure you try it out before you say, I like this, I don't like this. Now, the two main bondage that human nature carries with it is likes and dislike. Likes and dislike. We have been trained, we were raised up, we have been schooled and educated to see some set of things as things that we can like as some set of things, as things that we can dislike. In the process of trying to say we are truly free, we live in bondage. Because I realized that everything you like, even the evil in it, looks perfect for you. And everything you dislike, even the goodness in it, irritates you. So the fact that you don't like a thing or you like a thing is not a true picture of that thing. And if there is something beautiful about what you dislike, but you chose to dislike it, you put yourself in the bondage of never getting to know ever. And so you lose out on the beautiful things that what you dislike have to offer. And if there's anything that you like, and there are evils there, there are bad there, there are wickedness there, and there are things there that you don't want. But because you like them, you be a partaker of that evil. And so you become a slave of whatever it is you like, and the enemy of the things you don't like. Isn't that how we live our lives? A lot of people will think that when I come to say bondages and all that, I will be talking about religion. Religion is the least of your problem in life. You can pull out of religion. You can say, no, I don't want to do no more. But when it comes to your nature, your life is governed by what you like and what you dislike. And that is the reason why you would prefer to follow a leader who has so many flaws that is directly affecting your life negatively than someone who is not as popular, whose messages, whose teaching, whose way of life, whose example will benefit your life. Why? Because you like the bad leader, you dislike the good follower. Can you see the bondage you put yourself in? 
Now, as a seeker, this is what we do daily. We want to find out the truth and hold on to the one that is established as the truth here in Nigeria, there in South Africa, there in Brazil, there in America, without any preconceived notion or any ulterior motive. We do not know if you are saying the truth. We do not know if you are lying to us. We are your friends. Not because we are fools, but because we are seeking to know who you truly are. We don't dislike you or like you up front. We give you benefit of doubt. Now, isn't that what was called a sin in your Bible? Is that the knowledge of good or evil? When you have the knowledge of good or evil, when you begin to dictate or define your life according to likeness and dislike, you are not able to maximize your potential in life. And your divinity is reduced to the barest minimum where you begin to live in the mortal body. So you move like a normal person, you talk like a normal person, you think like a normal person, and everything that happens to everybody happens to you too because like them, you have formulated an ideology of what you like and what you dislike. Even if there are goodness in the things you dislike, you dislike the goodness all the same. And if there are evil in what you like, you like the evil all the same. That's why most of you are in a bad marriage and you don't know how to pull out. So you see a woman in an abusive marriage. And they say, okay, this man is bad for you. This man is killing you, is battering your life, is going to kill you someday. And she will say, oh, you don't know John. I love John. I love him just the way he is. And if you know, when he beats me, it's a show of love. It's a show of love. Now, that is what we mean by love is blind. It is not love. What you practice there is not love. The only thing putting you in bondage of that abuse is likeness. When you like a thing up front, you have signified to the old world that whatever comes out of it, you are part of it. And you don't need to even say to the world that I'm part of this mission, I'm part of this vision, I'm part of this person's life, I want to give my life to this person or whatever. The moment you decide in your mind without a verbal communication that you like this person, you like this thing, you have given a signal to the world. And we can easily see it that either the person is good or that thing is bad, you are willing to approve and validate. Willing to approve and validate. You see? So we say smoking is bad, not because it's a sin, but it's killing you. It's getting your lungs down the drain. We say drinking is bad, not because it's a sin, but because your liver is going to get damaged, but because of your likeness for these substances. You don't mind if they kill you. You just like them all the same. Bondage of human nature. Okay, what, do you have? what if you have another chance to now take smoking and drinking side by side check out the content of them and think ahead of what the repercussion of what you're about to like is doing to you maybe you will take another choice or you will choose another lifestyle but because you have dedicated yourself to like this thing you become a slave of the thing that you like so also your addiction it starts from likeness to addiction where you solely live and you are dependent on the substance or that particular liquid. Likeness and dislike. As little as there, someone would say, it is my freedom to like what I like. It is my freedom to dislike what I dislike. It is none of your business. What you call freedom is actually, it's actually, an independence that is issued on trial. That's what they say. Freedom is an independence issued to you on trial. Now, go try this independence. Let's know if you are worth it. That's what freedom is. Go give it a try. Let's see if you are capable of handling what independence is. And most often than none, or more often than none, we are not capable of the independence that we are looking for. Because while we are trying to get independence, most of us become dependent on another kind of substance, on another kind of evil, on another kind of habit, on another kind of life. Not truly dependent. 
we just leave this kind of dependency to that kind of dependency. We are still dependent. Even while we say we have freedom, it is independence issued on trial. And when you begin to say, this is what I like, it is my freedom, it is my choice, it is my right, and all of those things, do you think of the consequences of those things that you say you like? Or do you take time to leave your emotion aside and say, without my emotion, without my like, my likeness and dislike to this thing, I want to see what will end up if I take this voyage. What is the destination that this thing is taking anybody to, not necessarily me, but anybody. The ability to be a critical thinker is the very first step to true freedom without emotion. Love is a beautiful thing, but a love that is wrongly defined is the saddest day of your life. Because most people think love is that feeling of, you know, that emotion of, anticipation, longing for, passion, wanting to be inside a person's life, be glued to them and them showing you love and attention. That is not love. That is foolishness at the speak. As a matter of fact, <laughs> true love really do not have anything to do with being emotionally entangled with someone. True love, whenever you say this is love, and your emotion can be found in that, it is not love. That is your likeness. Whenever you say this is hate, and your emotion can be found in the thing, that is not hatred, that is dislike. And you know what likeness does to you? It helps you to be a partaker of the evil of another person. It helps you to be one of the members of that particular cult, even if what they do is wrong, you like them like that. What about dislike? Even though they are doing what is good and that is best, you don't want to be a part of them. Because you think that you are too good for this set of people. You are too holy for this set of people. You are too intelligent for this set of people. See, there's no crowd here. What am I doing here? I don't like where there is crowd. I don't like where there's no crowd. Where there is crowd, that means there is sense. So many of you have led yourself into your ruin today because you destroy yourself collectively destroy yourself collectively okay there is no much buzz around this particular name this particular product this particular person and a lot of those things so there is no nutrient in them there's no benefit in them there is nothing useful about them they cannot be directly applied to my life to take me from where i am to where i want to be that is how most of you lose out on the grip of the very miracle that you are looking for because you have judged the end of the matter from the beginning of it, without finding out what is the content between the beginning and the end. Surely, how credible your result is, is not where you get it or where you ended up. It is the process through which you took in order to get it. So what process are you putting in place to ensure that what you like is also scrutinized as well as what you dislike? So everybody go to this particular church, everybody is going to this particular country, everybody is going to this particular mosque, everybody is listening to this particular person, everybody is doing this, it is the name of a person you can see all around, and automatically you begin to develop some kind of affection and likeness for this person, for this place, not knowing what trouble people face in that place. Not knowing if they are being destroyed. Anywhere the belly face you follow. It should not be. You should be able to be a man or a woman who stand on a own or his own and say, no, I, I want to know what is true. Not because you gave me information about it, but because I have confirmed. How many things do you take your time to confirm in life? Surely you put yourself in bondage of what I like, what I don't like, without scrutinizing or finding out the content of your likeness and the reason for your dislike. Most of you even hate people because your friends hate them. <laughs> enmity by association you inherit your parents enemies most of them. 
because your parents don't like this set of people, this family member, this cousin's family and all that, you inherit their own hatred. You didn't know what goes on between them. You don't even know that whatever goes on in between them have nothing to do with you. You chose to block the door of favor or relationship or possibility between you and people who are in disharmony with your parent, with your boss, with your co-worker, with your wife with your husband. The fact that your husband don't like a person does not mean you will inherit the enemies of your husband. It should be a theme that everybody take their own decision individually. Everybody take their own decision individually. So that's the way life should be. But we are filled with a planet that is housing people who do not have a mind of their own. Remember the woman who died and went to heaven? Now, the reason why she doesn't want to go to hell is because of the information she has heard about hell. It is because of her own definition of what hell looks like. So she doesn't want to go to hell. And because of the information of what she saw hell to be, she wants to go back to hell. The story I told before we started, you can, if you're just joining us, you can start from the beginning of it. She heard that Hell is a very terrible place. Nothing survives there. People suffer there. She has a right to go to heaven. But a peep into hell, she saw people lounging and celebrating and feeling cool. And immediately, she has not scrutinized what it took for them to get there. She said she liked to be in hell. And when she was brought back to hell, she took, she saw the processes and she said she's going back to heaven. And the apostle told her, the kind of hell you saw earlier is introductory hell what you can get out of this hell. Even though you dislike this hell, you can still make a heaven out of your own hell. But now that you want to start enjoying the beauty of hell, this is the desert, you have to pass through it. This is hunger, you have to pass. This is fire, you have to pass through it. When you are able to pass the test, you can create the kind of hell you saw at a glance for yourself. And she said, no, I'm too big for this. I've suffered all my life. I don't want to start over again. I don't want to. Don't be like that woman. See, there is something about conviction that is beyond your likeness or your dislike. You can be convinced about something you dislike without having hateful emotion towards that thing. That is where you begin to leave the realm of your mortality to your divine reality. To your divine reality. Where you are neither male or female. Somebody said, okay, a uh, great man, how can I have wisdom like you do? How do I teach like you do? You seem to have this power of oration, and then you sound very convincing. How can I be like you? And I said, now, to be someone like this, I have nothing to do with being a person. You must be able to float beyond the level of this is my gender, this is my sex. This is what I like, this is what I don't like. You, can, you cannot attain your highest level of divinity by having likeness and dislike. Those emotions of love and emotion of hate, they will destroy your life. You have nowhere going. So this is a male job, this is a female job, will never allow you to get a dividend of what it takes to do either of those jobs. And it happens in your marriage too, in your relationship where you think this job is for the women, this is for the men. No, marriage or relationship should not be about who does what. It should be about who is available to do what needed to be done at the time it ought to be done. Now, there is no dislike. There is no likeness. It is availability. And in being available, you learn more because now you are bringing your seeking ability into every part of your life. I dislike this department in my place of work. I like this department in my place of work. So you are not able to move around all the department in your place of work. And when you are looking for someone to become the CEO or the MD of the organization, because you have limited yourself, you have narrowed yourself to the department you are, where you got into the company to this time, they are not able to take you because they are looking for someone who can oversee. An overseer is a seeker who have touched everything, not with the emotion of love or hatred, but with the knowledge or the passion to know and to learn. What are you doing to change this face of your life and where you are right now? Now you are angry about your friend who is getting promoted and you are just angry. 
And there's nothing the universe can do about it because you didn't pay the price. You limited yourself. You narrowed your scope to what you like and what you dislike. And because to be a leader, you have to move beyond likeness and dislike. We don't need an emotional person to be a leader. We need someone who can oversee things from a neutral level. They pick your friend because he or she is applying their mind to knowledge. They are seeker, even though they don't do it spiritually, but physically they are also seekers. Only seekers are leaders. They say that's why they say you will find what you are looking for. What are you looking for? And when you are looking for a thing, have you decided in your mind that either it is here, I will not go. Even if it is not here, this is where I'm going to stay. You are not a true seeker when you have made up your mind on how to get solution. You are not. You are not. If you are a Christian, there's a part in the scripture that says that when they come to me with a preconceived notion, I'm going to tell the prophet to tell them that what they have thought of is right. So they will get destroyed with their own already made up mind. So when you are coming to the center of the universe to give you the information, you don't come with your own kind of answer. You don't bring the attitude of I like this, I don't like this to the presence or to the place of meditation. In your journey towards spirituality and becoming divine in this physical world, you don't need to make a choice before you find out the information around it. Don't be like a normal person who buys a product according to the container. Check the content. Don't be driven by the advertisement. A lot of you are driven by the advertisement, the advert jingle, how loving the advert is. So they tell you if you drink this, if you drink that, you're going to be floating in heaven. You are what you drink and all of those things. And because of advertisement, you allow the air, the media to ruin your life. And you keep taking it. The more of the advert you see, the more of it you take. You do not want to care about what the content of that product is doing to you because you are not a true seeker. I am a seeker. Are you a seeker? And in seeking, how are you seeking? Are you seeking with a decision that this is what you want to have and this is how you want to get it? Or you are seeking because you want the source of life to give you what befits you as you move on. Be deliberate about you're seeking. Be deliberate about it. So these bondages of human nature only lie between what we like and what we dislike. Look at where you are right now. It is a product of what you like. You like your comfort zone, so you will forever be a tally to the worst population because only those who take risk become leaders. You don't like a receptionist job, but that is what you think your nature can take. You can be the CEO. You really don't like the marketing job, but that is what you think is available or can get you, get you enough commission or get you to travel all around and all that. You can be the founder of a good company. And if we give you option, you really don't like the man you married. You really don't like the woman you are with. You just felt you don't have option. Oh, because you are getting something from them for the moment. So you just stick to them. A lot of you are in abusive marriage because of finance. You don't know where to start from. You are scared to take a risk. A lot of you are in a place of job you don't like. You go to work every morning and you say, oh, this job is killing me. Instead of you to spend your energy complaining about the job killing you or not, why don't you look at the things that are beautiful about that job? If you refuse to leave, you have option. You always have option. So instead of you just, ah, they hate my job, it's killing me. Now you are producing hatred. You are producing death. You will eventually die through the hands of that job, maybe by hypertension, stroke, or whatever it is, or stress, because you are creating reality that you want from the job. Instead of you to create bad reality, you have two options. Quit the job, stay at home, or look for the things that are good about that job. And let them be your source of motivation. Surely there are good things in that. In the same country you are running from, people are raking in millions every day. In the same nation where you're saying nothing is working, something is working for people here. You have just decided to use your likeness and your dislike to determine the source of life. Most of you, a few years ago, you were not thinking of moving out of Africa. But because your friends are all abroad now, you begin to create a dislike for where you are. 
And because there is an emotion of dislike in you, everything likable and good about your current situation does not work for you. Because this thing is about your aura, unseen forces and energy and information, request and attraction. You are releasing from your body to the planet. The moment you begin to dislike your location, your spouse, your job, nothing good comes out of them for you. So what will you use your emotion for? To dislike, to lie, to live on the periphery of mortality, or to be a person who rises above being a male, being a female, being a Christian, being a Muslim, being this or being that, or being divine. And in being divine, in your state of spirituality, everything is clear. It's like someone taking a helicopter. When you look at the traffic jam down from the helicopter, it looks so peaceful because you have distanced yourself from every negativity and negative vibe in the traffic. It looks peaceful. You are even taking a picture, but get involved in that traffic down there. You're already causing somebody's life out. Because what? You hate traffic. Somebody is in traffic having fun. In that traffic, somebody is selling their goods, making money, feeding their family. Life is what determines if you will live in perpetual bondage of freedom. But when you are having a perspective towards life, do not be definite. Do not have a perspective according to people's information. Do not allow the rave of the moment what is trending to determine your perspective towards life. Don't be a social animal. Don't be a community buffoon. Be a man of yourself. Be a woman of yourself. Have your own life for once and live. Take yourself out of the bondage of this is good, this is evil, to what good is there in evil and what evil is there in good, I want you to know. Surely both can work together for my good. All things work together for the good of those who approach their creator, the source of life, and chose to constantly live up to their divine reality. My name is Greatman Ailara and I don't want you living in bondage. This is my peace for you. Till the next time we see you again, don't forget that you can be a partner with us at Crystal Love Support Foundation. We will reach out to widows or so pay medical bills for children who have a medical issue. We plant trees, nurture the nature, revive the rivers, help the earth to heal, and also create a green environment. We are engaged in full grassroots development. And also we make sure that our teenage mothers who are taking advantage of go back to school. For more information, you can just check the caption of this particular video on how you can be one of our volunteers. And if you are requesting information on how to be a donor, the information is just right there too. We want you to serve humanity with us and love life. Be in love with humanity. Be in love with lives. Not only of mankind, but of the trees, of the animals, of the nature, of the planet Earth, where we find ourselves. This is a time for you to write above what you have been taught all this while and begin to say, how should life be? Not what has life been. You are free. And you are free indeed. Grace be with you, and I bow to the divinity in you. Namaste. Bye for now. Click the notification button and to share with your friends.